my show. I'm Kristen Amdahl and this is episode 929 and we are here live in Southwest Florida in my backyard today. If you are joining me live, please say hello and we'll move some of these so we can, can we see out now? I guess the chair's in the way. I'll move the chair so we can see a little more greenery. Okay, if you're joining me live, please say hello. Let me know if you're crafting this morning. Let me know if you have questions for me. Hi Val and Joe, Lisa, Donna, good morning. Happy Friday everybody. I hope you're having a great day so far. For those of you that may have not been uh, here for a while, I released a whole bunch of videos this week for the Layla crochet wrap. There is a six part video series showing you how to read the charts and work all the stitches to do all five stitch sampler sections as well as how to do the multicolored crochet chain fringe. And in that uh, playlist for the Layla, you can also find all of the, um, all of the styling videos too. There's a styling video for doing the interwoven scarf look, and there's a styling video to show you how to style this in eight different ways, from poncho to vest to cowl, shawl, uh, and different ways to wear it as a scarf. So lots of fun things to do with this one. Uh, and it's easy. These are very easy stitches. There's treble crochet, one cluster stitch, double crochet and single crochet, and a little half double crochet. So basic stitches, and I show you step by step how to do each one at the beginning of each of the stitches. So lots of way, and I show you how to read the charts as we go. So lots of ways to learn and empower yourself with that pattern. All right, hi Marsha and Adriac. Hi Judy, thanks for posting links, Judy. And if you are signed up to get emails from me, you probably saw a new pattern yesterday. So I have released the Lux Fantasy Vest pattern. It's a Cardi Wrap vest with the options of sleeves. And this morning I was gonna show you how to attach the sleeves to it, which is nice and easy. And it be the way that I decided to join the sleeves gives you the opportunity to wear it sleeveless like this or wear it with sleeves. Now, when you're wearing it sleeveless like I'm wearing right now, I would recommend doing this look when you're wearing sleeves, but since I'm putting the sleeves on and it's warm here today, that's why I decided to go sleeveless for my under layer. But I do feel like um, depending on what you're going to wear with this pattern, the Lux Fantasy Vest, depending on what you're going to wear with it, I would say if you're going to wear it sleeveless, wear the opposite underneath and vice versa. Now, if you want to wear sleeves under the sleeves, obviously that's no big deal at all either. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, does anybody have any questions? And then I will show you a sneak peek of a new pattern that uh, I will be releasing in Lux either today or by ne the uh, beginning of next week for sure. And, and always the, there'll be new. Oh, G says I look like Daenerys from uh, Game of Thrones. Well, that is quite a compliment. She's my absolute favorite character from that show. So thank you. Okay, you wanna see another sneak peek before we do the sleeve tutorial this morning? This, I'm not even gonna wait for anyone to say yes because I know the answer is yes. So this is the Lux Shelly Pullover and it has this beautiful offset floral stitch pattern for the lower body. It's worked in the round from the bottom up. The pattern will come in five sizes um, and I'll tell you the a number of balls when I in a minute. And then when you separate to do the front and back upper body, uh, I kept the neckline wide because I instead because I wanted to add a tie in at the back neck here and what this tie does is it gives you the look of a draped scoop neck by keeping the neckline wide and tying it tighter at the shoulder seams it gives you this beautiful draped scoop neck design uh, look and I thought that that was so pretty especially with such drapey yarn this is be so luxe yarn my number two sport weight yarn that is 70 percent 
bamboo and 30% cotton. And then after that, we add these delicate sleeves. And this is simple double crochet in the upper body and the sleeves, which is what you see here in between the flowers. So it all ties together so beautifully. And then I used a very simple type of foundation oval for the neckties. Uh, those of you that are old school, Pretty Woman fans will probably recognize my inspiration for this. There is a, a cocktail dress that Julia Roberts wears in the movie where, and she, that one is actually a little bit different than this. It comes, so she wears an off the, a, a wide neck scoop cocktail dress when she's waiting for him in the bar at the hotel. And then she has lace pieces that come up here. I believe it goes in the front of her neck and then ties in the back of her neck. But still, this is definitely an homage to that. I think this is so pretty. Yes, it does look like motifs, which is a nice illusion for something that's made in one piece with just a stitch pattern. So this pattern will have um, charts as well, and it's written for five sizes. It'll come out either later today or uh, Monday, and I will send out an email when it's available, or you can check my website as well. And uh, based on the sizes, it'll be a four, five, or six ball project, and all of that information will be shared when the pattern comes out. In the meantime, who would like to see me? Uh, this pattern's available now, and it is, if you just wanna make it sleeveless, this one is a six ball project without sleeves, and it's an eight ball project if you add the sleeve. How beautiful is this? It's worked from the center. We start with foundation ovals in the center, then you work out in one direction, add a sleeve, and then work to the end. Then you pick up from the opposite end of the foundation ovals and repeat exactly the same way for the second side. So to make this piece as is, don't forget you can always still wear this as a scarf or a cowl too. Once you wrap it around your neck, you would not know that there are those uh, armhole openings. So you could definitely wear it as a cowl and or secure it for a cowl. Did I say scarf at first? Maybe I said cowl twice. I meant you could drape it as a scarf or tie it as a cowl too. So we could even tie it or use a butterfly clip or whatever. So really a huge amount of volume and so beautiful to do that as well. But let's, and I'm going to put it on the dress form because I think it'll be easier to show you how to secure the sleeves. Now, if you want to wear this only with sleeves, you don't have to make the sleeves convertible like I did. You could make the sleeve, the sleeves are made separately. So here's one of the sleeves. So we start with foundation ovals, just like with the shawl, but work in the round and work for certain number of rounds you'll have to read the pattern to see how many and then I make little chain ties which I tell you how to do that in the pattern as well and so once you have the sleeves and the ties if you want to make this convertible like I did then you would tie them on when you want them if you want this to be permanently just with sleeves then I would suggest just sewing them on just sew the sleeves on, that's it. So either way, super easy. Uh, where can you get a dress form? You can get a dress form on Amazon. I know I have some in my Amazon shop. I'm gonna lift this up a little bit so we can get a better view of the sleeves while I do this. And there are other stores, I think other people are sharing where they've bought them as well. So what I'm gonna do is secure this can you see this okay? You want me to lift it up a little higher maybe? Well, that's as high as it'll go. How's that? Is that pretty good? All right, so I'm gonna take a pin first to mark here. Wait till you see how easy this is. Oh, I was a little rough with this when I pulled the sleeve out. So I'm gonna suggest you don't be rough with it when you pull the chain back out. I was in a rush doing the photo shoot for both of these and I pulled this really hard. Anyway, uh, so what I'm going to do is insert, so it's very similar to corset tying or tying shoelaces, adding shoelaces to a sneaker. So we're just going to insert this chain tie into both the sleeve and the body. And what I'm going to do now is work back and forth 
in the sleeve and in the sleeve opening on the shawl. So in the sleeve, in the sleeve opening on the shawl. And what will happen is once we add some tautness and pull on this a little bit, see how it just closes up that seam completely? You will not see this seam at all once we, once we tie this taut and uh, secure it, which is amazing. It's amazing that you could have so many options with a pattern like this. Because when it's got sleeves and when it doesn't have sleeves, it's a totally different look. Um, it really looks like a, just a proper cardigan with sleeves, which as you know from the construction, or maybe you don't, this is a lot less complicated than a cardigan. This is just, whoops, I went the wrong way. So you want to try to keep everything going the same way. So I'm going from front to back in the sleeve. And I think I'm going from back to front in the body. Doesn't matter which way you do it. All I suggest is that you remain consistent, right? Just like with anything else. Okay, and then as I'm going to the other side, what I like to do is grab another pin. <laughs> So the pin that was holding the shoulder together, which we don't need, I'll, I'll pin the sleeve out of the way just so that I can see what I'm doing. Okay, can you still see what I'm doing? Yes, you can. Okay, so we'll go from back to front in the sleeve and from front to back in the body. I think that's what I said I was doing. If you're unsure of doing this evenly between making sure that you're picking up the same amount of space between the sleeve and the uh, body, you could mark your, yourself here. You could use your split ring stitch markers to mark some ease uh, to make sure that you're, to make sure both of them are at the midpoint, to make sure both of them are at the quarter points. All right, and because we're just using a chain here, I am able to slide it around so I can make more space for myself. All right, we're halfway through. See how fast this is? And obviously I'm trying to hurry a little bit to show you on camera. If you were doing this at home, you could definitely take your time and make sure you did it precisely. Okay, so now I've made it all the way through. I'm gonna tie it. What I found is that tying it in a little bow was easier to get it back out because I'm, and then I'm gonna ease that around got tight in one section here so we're going to ease that around so it's not so gathered okay and we have a secured sleeve how amazing is that all right so we'll try so now that tie is at the top of the shoulder here somebody said that they thought it might be cute there and that's fine if you want it to be seen you can but if you don't want it to be seen simply put it to the other side the shawls work back and forth in rows so there really isn't technically a right side or wrong side they're both identical on both sides so let's put on that sleeve now all right i could ease that around a little bit more like i said i'm doing this live and uh and trying to hurry along Okay, so there we go. Obviously you wouldn't want to do just one sleeve, you'd want to do both sleeves if you're doing them, but this really shows you how different it can look. You can have it with sleeves or without. And then once you do that, obviously you can close this with a butterfly clip. Let's see if I can back up a little bit more so you can see more of what I do, what I'm doing. So as far as the body goes, a butterfly clip, right? Or leaving it open or corset tie it. It does sit really well, if you notice. It sits really well to just leave it open like that as well. It's fairly long in the back. But those of you that are looking for 
more full coverage in the back, this might not be the style of project for you. Because what happens is to make this much longer in the back, it would make the these much longer too, which means it would the points of this would come further down. But if that's something that you like, let me show you what happens when you tie these front points together. When you tie those front points together, which is something you can only do with lightweight drapey yarn, um, it actually makes it more like a proper, <laughs> a proper even hem cardigan. And when so when you do that, then making it wider would actually really work. And I brought my board out so I could tell you what I'm talking about. But oh, I'm so in love with the sleeve. Like if I wasn't trying to show you all the options of doing it with a sleeve without, I would actually secure these sleeves for real like permanently because I would prefer to wear this with the sleeves I think I think the sleeves are so beautiful look at that whether you wear a shirt underneath or just show your skin through I think that that is so so pretty and it's the same stitch pattern as the body but it's the stitch pattern in rounds instead of rows so in the pattern you will get both charts and obviously you will get written instructions for how to do the stitch pattern in rows and rounds as well, which is just slightly different, not super different. Isn't that wonderful? All right, so would you, uh, so I brought out my color board. So if you wanted to go over colors that you could choose to make this, we could do that. I also brought out my drawing board in case you would like to uh, go over, in case you would like to go over how to modify this pattern, or we could work on putting the other sleeve on. Do I have a gold? I don't know what that means. Do I have a gold what? Okay, so we could put another sleeve on here, or we or we could show the colors. You want to see the colors. Okay, so let me set up. I might even move spots then. Let's get this out of the way. I'm going to set up my easel real quick. Okay, uh, and let's see, the color board is right here. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. I can't decide if this is better in the sun or not in the sun. I think it might be better if this is in the sun. Let's try. Very risky to try to move this. I can't do it with it on there. Come on, don't be stupid. it will fall and that wouldn't be good. Okay. So I'm wearing the jeans that I that I know and love from Amazon, but I'm wearing them in a new size today. I'm wearing size large instead of extra large, and I am so ridiculously happy about that funny you know when your jeans come out of the dryer baggy you know it's time to get a new size right <laughs> okay so let's go over the colors of be so Lux yarn again to make the Lux fantasy vest with sleeves you'll need eight balls don't forget that be so Lux yarn is only $5.99 a ball but comes also with bulk discounts so the more you buy the more you save so if you need eight balls I know it's definitely not $5.99 a ball anymore this is all in the sun all right, so I used color Denim Crush for mine, which is this beautiful denim blue color, which I, you know, it's one of my favorite colors. But there's so many colors to choose from here, no matter what kind of colors you like. There's something for everybody here. So we'll start at the beginning here. This is the pink column. We have Flat Out Fabulous, which is a darker raspberry pink. And then we have, whoops. Hello Gorgeous, which is a brighter hot pink. 
There's so many ways to mix and match these colors too, and I have so much information about that on the pattern on the yarn page. This is rose-colored glasses, a dusty light mauve pink. And then we have pretty in pink. It's a pretty pastel pink. And then the last color in the pink column is called Hush of Blush. Which is a very pale blush pink. I'm not going to lift all of them off. The ones that are in the sun I think are easier to see. So then we go to our red and orange column here. And at the top we start with, why are all of the labels pinned? This makes no sense. Uh, it's always something, right? Okay, so this is the darkest red. It's more of a blue red. This is called Go With The Lava Flow. And then we have, it's more of a classic red, Paint The Town Red. And then this one is more of a orange red and maybe a little less saturated, a little more muted. This is called you're My Lobster, which is more of like a tomato red or an orangey red. And then we have this beautiful vibrant, vibrant orange called Mango Tango. Any one of these colors would be absolutely amazing in that uh, fantasy, luxe fantasy vest. This is Machu Picchu, a beautiful soft peach. So pretty. And then we have our yellow, yellow to cream white column here. And starting at the top with yellow brick road. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful gold yellow. Or even like a maze also. And then this is a bright classic primary yellow, sunshine state of mind. And then this is a beautiful pastel yellow called Sliced Lemons. Sliced Lemons. And then our two neutrals are Pearls of Wisdom, which is more of a creamy neutral color. And then we have closer to white. This is called Freshly Washed Linens. So I know some people prefer an off-white to a white, so those would be your two options there. Both beautiful. The um, the Lux Shelly pullover that I showed you this morning, that one is done in Pearls of Wisdom. So this one is done in the creamy color, the creamy off-white color. That one's not white-white. Okay, so then the next column here is our green column, and it starts at the top here with a beautiful dark green called Enchanted Forest. So, so pretty. And then we have beautiful emerald green called Four Leaf Clover. Actually, it's more of a clover color. This is more of an emerald green. This is called Treasure Island because it looks more like emeralds. But depending on which way you wanted to go with an emerald green, both would fall into that category. They are those really bright primary greens. And then the following three colors are more in the yellow green, in the yellow green family, starting with succulent garden. And matcha latte. Electric Lizard. And then this is a pale mint green called Breath of Fresh Air, which is more of a play on words with a breath mint. <laughs> Get it? Mint, breath mint, breath of fresh air. <laughs> I had so much fun naming these. If you are interested in learning about the story, how I named this collection, I thought about writing a blog post. If that sounds like something that would interest you, let me know and I can share some of my secrets about that. The next column here is more of our blue to green family. So blue to green 
column is in between the green and the blue column. And it starts at the top here with what waterfall rendezvous, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous darker teal. And then a little bit lighter teal. And by the way, these colors look absolutely fabulous together. If you're unsure of mixing and matching contrast colors or working in color theory, sticking with any one of these color family columns, I think you would be very happy doing color work that way. So that would be the easiest way to do color work. This is more of a medium teal and it's called Tropicana Cabana. So, so pretty. Both of those colors are just, oh, so pretty. And then here is a pale turquoise called Sea Breeze. Hello, baby Bjorn. Did you come to say hi, baby? And then this is uh, also uh, in the aqua family, but a little more blue than green. This is called Social Butterfly. Also such a pretty color. And then Peacock Feathers. Again, these are more, so they start, these are the greener side of teal, and these become the bluer side of teal at the bottom here. This is Peacock Feathers. Also such a beautiful color. I love every color here. I love color. Can you tell? <laughs> and this is Denim Crush, the color that I made the Lux Fantasy vest in, which is so pretty. You can see so many photos of it on my website, and I'll take more photos next time we go to the beach, too. Um, wanted to show it with a bunch of different outfits so that you can see different ways to wear it. So you may, if you've seen the photos that I've released so far on my website, you'll see that I wore a, a navy blue silk sleeveless shell for wearing it underneath the sleeves and then I wore a beautiful white blouse with some lace detailing on the sleeves when I wore it sleeveless. So already that shows you a, a wide variety of looks of the ways you can wear it and I will wear it with a dress and some other things and some other types of colors when I take it to the beach so you'll get to see even more then. All right let's keep going so we're off to the blue column now. So we have a very dark midnight blue called Walking After Midnight. And then we have a bright cobalt blue here named after my favorite music, Bossa Nova Blues. If you've never heard Bossa Nova Jazz, it's this amazing jazz from Brazil, usually sung in Portuguese. It's my favorite music. Okay, then we have a bright, not bright, this is like a medium sapphire blue and it's called Baby Light My Sapphire. Get it? Baby Light My Fire. Baby Light My Sapphire. Such a pretty, pretty, pretty color. And then we have California Dreaming, which reminds me of the color of a sky on a day when you have no clouds. Oh, look it, look it behind me. Can you see the inspiration there? Now, when it's in the sun, doesn't it look a lot like the sky you see up here? So it's the color of a beautiful cloudless sky called California Dreaming. Isn't that pretty? So beautiful. Okay, and then we have a really pretty pastel blue called Don't Quit Your Daydreams. I have a story about this quote. I'll share with you another day. We're going to run out of time or we're going to go over today. I'd rather show you all the colors and go over by five minutes than be on time. So then we have our purple column here. And my goodness, if you're into purple, how gorgeous would a shawl be done in just doing stripes in all of those colors or a sweater done just mixing all of those colors? Like if you really didn't want to mix and match colors on your own, seriously, just the purple column. <laughs> They're amazing. Anyway, we'll start here at the top. This is Wild Pansy. And any one of them, just, if you love purple, like, I don't even know how I pick my favorite. Wild Pansy's right up there, though. And we have this beautiful pale purple called Lavender Lily. So pretty. So don't forget, this is number two sport weight. 70% bamboo, 30% cotton. It has drape for days. It's so gorgeous. The fabric is just drapey as can be and in all of these beautiful colors. This is Aurora Splendor. So beautiful. And then we have 
kimono violet. Sugar Plum Fairy. I'm glad I can capture a little bit of sunlight here to get these in the sun for you in the close-up. And then we have this one here. It's like an eggplant or a raisin and it's called Raisin the Bar. Get it? Like raising the bar? Raisin the Bar. Raisin. They're all so pretty and slightly different. So like if you wanted to do some color work, that would be a no-brainer right there. It'd be so awesome. Oh, did I move this one up? Okay. And again, if you want a no-brainer color work project, my goodness, how beautiful is the neutral side here too. Uh, just all so pretty. Starting at the top here, we've got Heart of Gold. Heart of Gold. So, so beautiful. A very pretty light, pass, a, a light muted gold. And then we have Expedition Khaki. Any of these would be pretty on their own, but with color work would be so pretty if you mixed and match any of these columns. Or if you want more color theory ideas, follow the link to the Be So Lux yarn page. And I've put together, I've curated some of some five color sets like I did with Be So Baby. This is a ray of taupe, get it? Like a ray of hope. Really pretty soft taupe. Also kind of like the color of brown sugar, light brown sugar. And then we have a pale silver here called Foggy Morning. Let's find that sunshine. Isn't that pretty? That would also be really pretty with the other neutrals, like the white, uh, the freshly washed linen and pearls of wisdom. Very pretty with those as well. And any of these neutrals would be great pop of color with any of the brights. And don't forget, any of the greens are Mother Nature's neutral. So if you wanted to add any of these greens for a pop of color with any of the brights, then you're going with Mother Nature's palettes and Mother Nature is pretty awesome at color theory. <laughs> this is Smoke Rings. It's a beautiful medium gray smoke rings. And you can see it in comparison to Foggy Morning, how it is significantly darker. And then we have a dark brown called espresso yourself get it like express yourself but espresso yourself for the color of the rich coffee and last but not least oh it's right i forgot to show i forgot to bring out my sweet clara top that i did in black to reality so i did um i did a version of my sweet clara top in this i didn't bring it out this morning i can wear it one day next week uh, this is a beautiful solid jet black in Be So Lux yarn called Black to Reality. Get it? Like back to reality? Black to reality. Which again would be an amazing pop of color with any of these columns too. Think in terms of being inspired by, if you wanted to be inspired by say stained glass, you could do some sort of lacy or stitch pattern with any of these columns of colors and then pick up and do the contrast with the black or espresso yourself, black to reality or smoke rings to pick up on that grout color um, for, for the background. Uh, even going into some of these warmer neutrals here like a ray of taupe or espresso yourself or the heart of gold. Remember when I did that in that uh, Apollonia wrap, I did all bun a whole bunch of bright colors for the motifs and then I joined them together with a neutral, <coughs> excuse me, inspired by the grout that would hold together brightly colored tiles which is along the same lines as being inspired by stained glass oftentimes stained glass is darker than grout so you could go with the black to reality or espresso yourself for joining motifs together speaking of joining motifs together here's where i did a swatch recently uh, uh redoing the motifs from the majestic skies shawl and i joined i didn't join these in a neutral color i just stuck with five bright colors to pull together so these are colors go with the lava flow you're my lobster machu picchu rose colored glasses and sliced lemons and you can see even just picking so i picked between these two columns here so i went with go with the lava flow you're my lobster, Machu Picchu, rose-colored glasses, 
and sliced lemons. And you can find this inspiration palette with some pretty flowers from a nature inspi inspiration photo. If you just go to the, um, this is a sport weight number two yarn, Karen, and you can get all of that information and so much more if you just go view the Be So Lux yarn page that Judy's posting links to. And if you watch the recorded version, it'll also be available in the show notes when the show's over. <coughs> Excuse me, great questions, everyone. Does anybody have any other questions? Oh, we have a visitor. Baby Bjorn wants to say hello. Hi, sugar. Maybe not so much. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions? Thanks, Sherry. Yes, please, if you if you're, uh, would like some more inspiration for color theory, please follow the link to the Be So Lux yarn page. There you will see all 46 colors. You will see so much information about the yarn from the fiber content to the gauge to all sorts of things like that. Plus, you'll get to see some of the color inspiration photos that I put together curating five colors in combinations from the rows. You can see how to put together the color families from the color card. But if you want to see some of those really fun ways that I combine color with color theory, please take a look at those. They're really, really interesting. And as always, if you have questions, please feel welcome to ask. Don't forget these patterns are available now. So you can do the uh, Lux Fantasy Vest with eight balls of yarn. And that involves, um, and that's eight balls, falls into the bulk discounting. So it's not $5.99 a ball anymore. Once you order over five balls, there's a discount on every, every five ball increment. There's another discount all the way up to 30% off. So lots of great information on that page. Someone keeps asking about hook size. Hook size depends on your gauge and gauge information is all listed in detail on that page. And I do share what size hook I personally use in each pattern on the pattern pages along with gauge so that it doesn't matter if you need a different size, I share the gauge as well. What hook size I use for a project is just a suggestion starting point. What size you will need is dependent on your gauge. So great question, always a great opportunity to talk about gauge because I know it's such a mysterious subject for so many people. And we can pick up where we left off on this and talk more about it next week when we pull out the whiteboard and I talk about the different ways that you can do a Cardi wrap and modify it with um, some diagrams. So that's what we planned on doing on Wednesday and technical issues got in the way. So we'll pick up where we left off there next week. If you have any more questions, please always feel welcome to leave them in the comments. I get notified from those comments all the time and I do answer them. So please feel welcome to leave your comments even when we're no longer live. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed the show and tell, talking about color and everything else. Baby Bjorn's cameo. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. And I will see you Monday for the next episode of The Kristen Omdahl Show. Bye-bye.